Today, I'm gonna show you guys six different high protein breakfast recipes that I eat pretty much every week. They all have quite a variety of different flavors, so whether you're feeling something that's like a fruity dessert or a savory one, you're definitely gonna find the one that's right for you here. If you're new here, hello, I'm Janelle, and I create vegan and gluten-free recipe videos, what I eat in a day videos, grocery hauls, all that good stuff. So if you haven't already, make sure that you are subscribed below so that I can help you in your plant-based Based eating journey. All of today's recipes are vegan and gluten-free, and five out of six of them are meal prep friendly. So let's just get right into the two oat recipes that I love to make every week. We're gonna start with one that I've actually recently just started making. It is a fairly basic oatmeal recipe, but the kicker is this delicious blueberry and applesauce. Basically, we're stewing up blueberries and apples together, and they are so so good, they totally level up any plain Jane boring oatmeal. You can really do this with practically any fruit you like, but I honestly love pairing apples and really any kind of berry. So if it's not blueberry season for you, you can use any kind of frozen or fresh berry. But making a batch of stewed fruit could not be simpler when you are cooking up a pot of oatmeal on the stove. All you have to do is literally add your fresh apples, fresh or frozen berries into a saucepan, add a tiny little bit of water, no oil or butter needed, and let them just cook down in their own juices. And trust me, they will get a really, really juicy as they cook. And if you want to add just a little bit of sweetness, you can add a touch of maple syrup, some vanilla, a bit of cinnamon, and you have an awesome, delicious sauce. And if you want it to be a little bit thicker and chunkier, you can kind of not stir the sauce too much as it cooks so that the apples and the berries retain more of their shape. But you can also mash them down with a potato masher or a fork just to help them get a little bit more mashy and more like a compote or muddled, I guess, and it's so good either way. Now in this video, I had leftover oatmeal that I'd made previously, and also I'll just throw in a tip that oats are super meal prep friendly, which is basically what you're seeing here. I have some prepped oats from beforehand, and then you just add those stewed berries and apples, and to make this really, really nutritious, filling and satisfying, you can add a tablespoon of flax seeds on top, which is what I did here, add a tablespoon of nut butter. For my husband, I did sunflower seed butter, and myself, I always love peanut butter, so if you have a drippy peanut butter or you you can use powdered peanut butter with a little bit of water and drizzle it over and it's just so, so good you guys. This is definitely a recipe that I tend to enjoy more so in the fall and winter months when it's really cold and you just want a nice warm breakfast to heat you up and it's just so satisfying. So a lot of people might not actually know this but oats have a lot more protein than you may have thought. Depending on if you use sprouted or non-sprouted rolled oats, they can give you up to seven grams of protein per serving. That's quite considerable. A quick tip that one of my subscribers recently just recommended to me about oats is that when you're shopping for oats, try your best to find ones that are organic, as non-organic oats contain higher levels of glyphosphates, which are found in pesticides, and they can contribute to poor gut health. So if you are trying to improve your gut health, definitely try to find ones that are organic, if possible. Now moving on to my second oat recipe, we've got overnight oats, and that is nothing new. Overnight oats are very popular, they've been around for a well, chances are you have probably already made overnight oats or you like to eat them on the regular. What I have been really enjoying lately and more so in the warmer months as I find that overnight oats are a little bit more cooler and refreshing on you know warm summer mornings, I really have been trying to up the protein of my overnight oats as much as possible because I want a really satisfying filling meal. So this recipe honestly shows you exactly how to do it and it shows you just how much protein you can get in a jar of overnight oats. So if you have sprouted rolled oats, some chia seeds, flax seeds, hemp seeds, they all have a considerable amount of protein, as you can see here. And if you're gonna add any nut butter, you can just definitely add a little bit of extra protein in that regard. And then add some cocoa powder, add some cinnamon, stir it all up until you have a well-combined dry mixture. And then you just gotta add your liquid. So soy milk has the most protein out of any other plant milk out there. And if you want it to be a little sweeter, a little more flavorful, add some maple syrup, agave, vanilla extract, and that's it. You just added everything to a jar, super simple. You pop that in your fridge, let it sit overnight, and you have a cool, refreshing breakfast that is waiting for you. What is super awesome about overnight oats, especially if you make a jar that's about the same size as in this video, is that because it's so filling, you don't have to finish it all in one go. If you don't have a huge appetite in the morning, sometimes I just don't, maybe just eat half of it in the morning and save the other half for a post-workout snack or as an afternoon snack when you're feeling a 
little bit hungry. So definitely give this one a try. I love combining the chocolate nut butter flavors together. It's so, so delicious and it almost feels like you're eating dessert for breakfast, but it is super healthy, super nutritious, and will totally give you all the nutrients and energy you need for a productive morning. A great way to add more variety to your breakfast is to swap out the oatmeal for chia pudding. The great thing about this recipe is that it only has to sit in your fridge for 45 minutes to an hour tops. That's all it needs to thicken up and become a pudding. That means you can easily whip it up in the morning as you're waiting for your coffee to brew, keep it in your fridge until you're ready to leave the house, and then basically by the time you arrive at work, you have a breakfast that is ready to enjoy. I've got two flavors for you guys, one for the fruity lovers and one for the chocoholics. The first flavor is peanut butter and berry. This is kind of a take on peanut butter and jam and it is honestly so good, so nostalgic of like a PB&J sandwich, but in chia pudding form. So to start, I always start with a base of a plant milk. I usually end up using soy and if you have some yogurt, you can add that in to make it a little bit thicker and creamier. And then basically you just kind of customize it from there. If you want it to be a little extra sweet, you can add some maple syrup, a little bit of vanilla extract, and then we're just going to add in some frozen berries. Now this, these can be any berries that you like. I just happen to have blueberries and strawberries on hand, but if you have blackberries or a berry blend, that's totally fine. And if you have fresh fruit and that's all you have, that's also just fine as well. Basically, you're going to be blending it all up anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Now that you've blended up all those ingredients in the jar, you're just going to add a few tablespoons of chia seeds, and that's basically basically gonna make the bulk of the pudding. They're so nutritious, you guys. They're packed full of protein and nutrients and they just give you so much energy for the day. Plus, they're really good for gut health. Now, if you wanna be a little bit extra fancy like I did here, which I am all for a little bit extra fancy, you can spread some nut butter around the jar like I did there and then you can pour your chia pudding right inside so it gives this very pretty, fancy looking effect. And yeah, that's how <laughs> I made this PB and berry chia pudding and then once it has has uh, soaked up after about an hour, you can top it with whatever you like. You can use fresh fruit like the bananas I'm using here. You can add seeds, you can add nuts, you can add more berries, whatever you want. Add a little bit of extra nut butter on top and it is just so good and satisfying, you guys. It's fruity, it's full of flavor, and it's really filling. And then for all you chocolate lovers out there, I also have this one on my channel that you can check out if you want. I'll have a link right up here for you. It's a peanut butter and chocolate overnight oats, which is so rich and creamy. Okay, so we are switching up the base again to make these super high protein quinoa breakfast bowls. My husband Brad actually created this recipe about seven or so years ago when he was competing in triathlons. They are super filling, super quick to whip up, and they are very, very delicious. I recommend that you guys organize some of your favorite ingredients into jars and keep them on your countertop in like a little breakfast bar or a breakfast nook. You can literally just go to your dollar store, buy a few cheap little glass jars, and then hit up the bulk section of your local grocery store and fill them up with your favorite nuts and seeds and dried fruit, shred coconut, basically whatever you think you would like, and it will make your breakfast meal prep go so much smoother, and it's just like so fun to feel organized in that way. I just think it's a game changer for easy breakfast meal prep. So a pro tip for these high protein quinoa bowls is to make a batch of quinoa like the night before and let it sit in your fridge, because this recipe calls for cooked quinoa, and if you don't wanna have to go through the process of cooking quinoa in the morning, then definitely make it ahead of time. Now you just add pretty much whatever nuts and seeds you like. I use flax and chia seeds and you can add nut butter. I added some powdered peanut butter and really any other flavorings you like. That's just the best thing about these kinds of bowls is that you use your favorite things to make it filling, to make it satisfying, to make it tasty. And now I just added some plant milk and some liquid sweetener. You can use really any kind that you like or skip the sweetener. And then for any extra protein, you can add hemp seeds. You can add more nuts and seeds. You can even like stir in some protein powder if you are trying to get some more gains and you work out a lot. And to make this a very balanced meal, of course, add in some healthy fats like coconut, or you can even add avocado on top, or you can add more nuts and seeds or seed butter, and then add a little bit of fresh fruits for some healthy carbs, and you have a super, super delicious, satisfying meal. Again, these come together in literally 
five minutes if you already have your quinoa prepped and ready to go. And especially if you have your little breakfast nook set up, you are golden and these quinoa bowls are going to totally game change your breakfast if you are an on the go kind of person. Plus they're super easy to prep so you can bring them to work with you if you don't have time to eat breakfast at home. Yes, waffles can absolutely be a healthy, plant-based and gluten-free breakfast option. Instead of using flour and butter and eggs and maple syrup, you can make a few very simple adjustments to turn this into a healthy, high protein, high fiber breakfast. I would have to say that lentil waffles are pretty much now my favorite go-to weekend breakfast. I would probably take them even over banana oat pancakes, which I do have a recipe for on the channel right here, or you can check it out down here. These lentil waffles just have a lot more protein than the average flour-based waffle, and they really fill you up. They're so satisfying and they're so easy to make, you guys. By topping them with your favorite nut and seed butters and some extra healthy nuts on top and fruit, you have a protein-packed, satisfying satisfying waffle that will blow any other waffle out of the park that you have ever tried. So let's just get right into the recipe, you guys. Basically, you only need a handful of very simple ingredients. You're gonna need something to blend in, like a blender. You can use a hand blender like mine here, but you're basically gonna soak your lentils in some plant milk overnight with a few extra little things like vanilla, medjool dates for sweetness, or you could use maple syrup if you don't have dates, a little bit of salt, and then you're just gonna mix that all up and refrigerate it overnight. Or if you're gonna make this for a brunch, you can always soak it in your fridge earlier in the morning and let it soak for about three hours, and that should be pretty good. In the morning is when I like to add my flavorings like cinnamon, and then you add some baking powder. Make sure you only add the baking powder in the morning before you blend it. Now, just blend it until it's a smooth, thick batter like so, and you're pretty much ready to make a waffle. Now, all you have to do is lightly oil your waffle iron and start pouring in your batter. Usually this recipe gives me about two fairly large waffles, one for me, one for Brad, and they only take about eight to 10 minutes to cook. So if you happen to have a double waffle iron, which I wish I had, you have two breakfasts ready in like 10 minutes. Poor Brad and I have to wait 10 minutes each for our waffles because I only have a single waffle iron. Sad face. By the way, did I mention how crispy and crunchy these waffles are? They're out of this world, you guys. They're so flipping good. Top them with your favorite fresh fruit, a little bit of maple syrup, or you can skip the maple syrup and make it even healthier with some drippy nut or seed butter, like almond butter or tahini or peanut butter. And you guys, this is so, so good. I honestly, I just, I wish I could eat these every single day. I mean, I could, but you know, I like other things too. <laughs> Just because you're eating plant-based does not mean that you have to eliminate that classic breakfast that I'm sure we all grew up with. I'm talking about bacon, eggs, sausages, hash browns, all that yummy stuff. You can have it all, but we're gonna make it healthier and we're gonna make it with way less cholesterol by making it plant-based and gluten-free. I make a variation of this classic breakfast every week or so, and you can make it even healthier than what is in this video by swapping out the sausage with a healthier, lower fat option like tofu or soy curls or rice paper bacon, which is a recipe that will be hitting the channel very soon. So if you're interested in some vegan bacon, make sure that you subscribe below so you don't miss out on that upcoming video. Very exciting. This is a super, super filling breakfast, you guys. And I would say everything that you see here is meal prep friendly. Sometimes I do prefer to swap out the hash browns with crispy air fried potatoes and oh my gosh, if you have leftover potatoes from like dinner the night before and you re-air fry them in the morning, they become even crispier and they are so, so good. If you haven't done that, do it do it right now. Okay, so let's just quickly start by going over a very simple tofu scramble recipe that you can make to replace good old fashioned scrambled eggs. All right, so to make a very basic and simple tofu scramble, you're gonna crumble up either some extra firm or firm tofu or a combination of both. And then you're gonna add some turmeric to give it a nice kind of eggy color. Some garlic powder is always nice, salt, pepper. And then what's gonna make your eggs or your tofu scramble taste like eggs is what's called kalanamak or black salt. It kind of has like a sulfuric flavor and smell. And then to give it a slightly cheesy and savory flavor, you're just gonna add a little bit of nutritional yeast, which if you haven't heard of before, it's basically the vegan gold of all things plant-based because it kind of adds this 
cheesy flavor to really anything you add it to. In this situation, I served up tofu scramble with some of those, you know, the dehydrated hash browns you can get from Costco. So good, so lazy, but so good. And then I made this, you know, little veggie skillet with some bell peppers and corn. I'm pretty sure I used some fajita spices to make it taste, you know, like a fajita. It's so good. I just love this classic vegan breakfast and it's just so much healthier than probably what we all grew up with. This is balanced, you've got some healthy carbs, protein, you've got a little bit of fat in there and oh, it's just so good, you guys. And I just encourage you guys to give this a try. This one requires a little bit more effort, it's a little bit more involved, but like I said before, it's pretty meal prep friendly. So you can make large batches of the tofu scramble and you know, sauteed veggies or air fried potatoes and you pretty much have breakfast for a day or so if you make large batches ahead of time, which is something that Brad and I do actually quite a lot. It's actually what Brad and I had for breakfast this morning and yesterday morning. The power of meal prep, you guys. There you go, my friends. There are six easy, plant-based, gluten-free, high-protein breakfasts that I eat pretty much every week. If you enjoyed this video, I would so appreciate if you gave it a big like and consider subscribing below for more videos like this on your homepage every single week. I post at least twice a week, sometimes more, and I don't want you to miss out on anything that could help you in your plant-based eating journey. I love you guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you in another video. Bye!